is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living EV purely boo boo, staying off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1200 ladder and show off why we are the self appointed purely king, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, I did get top four at locals last night, third place specifically. Uh, I wanted to show what I'm working with with purely sprite right now, even though. That would be me kind of shooting myself in the foot because I have a regional this upcoming Sunday. So if you're going to be at, uh, or rather in Hollywood, Florida, um, at the regional at Cool Stuff Games, I will be there. Be sure to come up and say hi. You know, I can sign cards or, I don't know, take a selfie or shake a hand, give you a high five, whatever the hell people want to do, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to be playing purely Sprite at that regional. Maybe I shouldn't be showing off my list, but I don't feel like that this will get enough attention where I have to really worry about that. And the build, I mean, there's really not much to change at this point. Um, I'll go ahead and go over my matchups real quick. Round one, we played against, God, was it even like anything meta? It was something. It, it, it didn't even really cross my mind, but we beat it 2-0. We lost dice rolls all day, which I actually, yeah, I didn't win a single die roll, which is actually really depressing. Uh, but round one, we won against whatever it was, 2-0. Uh, and then round two, we lost to Infernoble in time. Had I played my turn a little bit differently, I would have won. I should have won. I felt like I was the better player, um, but that just might sound like my ego talking. Um, and then round three, we went against Melfi Sprite. Uh, we lost game one, and then we came back in 2-0, and I was, I was playing so angry in that match. Um, that was round three. There was five rounds. Round four, I played against Chimera Labyrinth, which actually kind of scared me because I feel like Chimera is actually a really difficult matchup for this deck. Um, but we ended up winning it game one and then game two. Uh, we decided to go second. He starts doing Chimera lines and uh, he hits starter out of my hand with the Chimera fusion. We top deck evenly matched, so we evenly the board. He has one face down, which is strike and a cosmic cyclone it. And he's like, you just opened up all the outs, didn't you? Uh, so then we won that, and then round five, we played against tier. We went to three games, went into time, um, and I ended up winning because happiness, being able to do damage, was really good. So, um, yeah, so four and one, uh, one round, one lost round two, one out the rest. Let's go ahead and uh, dive on into it here. Not much to explain. If you've seen my purely sprite Yu-Gi-Oh! in-depth uh, video, or if like you've seen the other deck profiles, you should know at this point how this deck functions. Um, real quick... Uh, I've been falling in love with Pure a lot more, so do keep that in mind that I'm starting to feel like Pure is the better way to go, uh, but we're playing three Purely, and then three Dark EV, uh, three Espeon, and then of course three Umbreon. Um, like I was saying with playing Pure, um, it's, it's hard to explain, right? Because in this deck, essentially what you're doing is that you're taking your flex spots, your 18 to 19 flex spots in your normal purely deck, and you're putting in sprite cards. So you have the flexibility of doing purely lines, but then you also have the um, gas to play through negations and interruptions with sprite. Um, so that does help a lot um, in regards to like, if you get like ashed or something. Of course, like if you open up a brick can where like your only play is to go Lily and hope that they don't have an ash, like it happens. I mean, against the Melfi sprite guy, I think it was game three where I just opened up like all monsters and my only play was to go Lily. So I just summoned Lily, activate the effect to search my friend and he didn't have any hand traps. So it worked out in my favor in that regard. Um, but I, I do feel like I'm wanting to go towards pure. I'm obviously gonna play this at the Cool Stuff Regional uh, because I mean, it's just like two days away at this point. Yeah, because today's Friday. Um, so I don't have time to pivot to pure, but being able to play six books in pure purely is very good this format. I mean, it, it makes a Rise Heart basically non-existent and it just helps crack boards so well. Being able to Book of Eclipse, save yourself from dying to like a big OTK board, like it's it's really good in that regard. Something that this build doesn't necessarily do because it focuses more on putting out negates um, with the Sprite engine. Uh, and then of course we're playing three copies of Beaver and then two copies of Angler. Um, I tried the 44 card list from Nats if you saw my previous deck profile. Um, I didn't like three angler with three blue. I felt like it was too much. Two is fine. I sided out one and I ended up losing to Sword Soul at one of my locals uh, last Wednesday because of it, so I never side this out. We usually side deck out one of our blues, um, which we're playing two copies of, and then one red, 
one carrot, one jet. People keep telling me to side out like either carrot or red, and I'm just like, why? Because then like if you get lightning stormed or evenly hit or something, you just lose the ball game. I'll never side those out. Um, but this engine's fine. Against the Infernoble deck, I shouldn't have activated Jet's effect and then let him use a monster negate. I should have just summoned out the jet since I had Angler up and then make like a rank two exceed and just try to like make plays to stall out the clock. Because if I stalled out the clock, I won. Like he lost 2,400 life points between his two museums, so... Yeah, it's, it's frustrating, but that's why we play Tested Locals, because once we go to a regional, if we actually play against Infernoble, which I feel is just kind of a bad deck, uh, then we just win the ballgame. Uh, and then we're playing three copies of Ash, and then three copies of Droll. These are my hand traps that I'm choosing. It was Ash and Imperm, if you remember when we first got our invite with this deck. Droll is just insane. Um, and then Ash being able to turn off Branded Fusion. Like, I, I still respect Branded. Like, this has a great Branded matchup. Um, and then Ash just in general being good. Droll just shutting anything down. If we play against Synchron and we hit Droll, like, we're good. In a 41-card deck, you have a 58 57% of opening up one hand trap, which isn't bad um, if my math is correct on that. So uh, that's it for the monsters. Uh, for the spells, we're playing three copies of My Friend. This is the biggest Ash bait in this deck. Like, they're either going to Imperm or Ash my Beaver, and if not, then they're going to Ash my uh, my friend, which is fine, because like if they Ash this, then I'm like, okay, cool, my Gigantic can go off. So it's funny how, like, if this card goes off, it's great, because you do normal purely lines, and, like, if they draw you, then it's like, okay, I go Beaver into Angler and do, like, Sprite plays and just set up a few Negates or as many as I can through a draw. Like, this serves as both a way to make purely lines, but then it also punishes the opponent if they decide to Ash it, because I'm like, cool, now we just do Sprite lines. That's what makes this deck so gross. Uh, and then we're playing three copies of Pretty. People had to read my cards all fucking day. Like, they, they didn't know what Pretty did. They didn't know what Happy did. Like, I activated this. Also, I have two supers and a rare. Don't judge me. <laughs> um, I, when I went against the Infernoble guy, he I activated it evenly, and he goes negate, and I chain Happy, and he took <laughs> he took time to, like, read his monsters and be like, wait, does, does that still negate the evenly? And I'm thinking, yeah, it, it does, but take your time reading your cards. we got like 40 seconds on the clock, and then, of course, as soon as he says battle phase on his turn, the clock hits zero, and I'm like, well, I lose. <laughs> so, yeah, just I think it's funny that people had to read my cards all day. Uh, three Sleepy, again, people had to read this all day. Uh, one Delicious, I wish this was at three. It's It needs to be at three. I don't care for anyone. Excuse me, what anyone says. Uh, one Starter, because I feel like two is just a little bit too much. Um... I really did like two because this can serve as discard fodder, but it just, I, I want to keep it at 41. Like, as close to 40 as possible, I feel like, is the way to go. And 41 was how I got my invite before, so hopefully it will serve me well again. Uh, one foolish and call by. I don't really care for talents in this deck. I, I would rather have the gas or, like, be able to do call by to hit something. Uh, one time at locals yesterday, someone tried to ash me and I went call by, and they're just like, they just picked up their cards and scooped. That's actually how I beat Labyrinth Chimera game one. He tried to ash me, I went call by, and he just picked up his cards. Um, and then one straight purely street. Um, this is actually really good. Like if you don't hit, um, like your, your sprite stuff and you start doing purely combos, you just set up my friend and stray. And uh, I actually did that against tier element. Uh, what was it? Game two. Yeah. Game two. I ended up drawing six cards cause we also had the, my friend. So we ended up drawing six cards off the sleepy memory. Like it, it was disgusting. It got back to our turn. We had like eight or nine cards in hand. And then the one leap and one double cross. We opened up both of these against uh, Labyrinth Chimera. It was game two. And uh, yeah, like it, it was just hilarious that we opened up both of these and we're just able to sit on them. Double cross came in clutch against uh, Tyr. Uh, I probably would have won the first game had I not realized that he had Pellerino up. Um, yeah, I mean, I could have hit the Pellerino and been fine. But he had it off to the side, so I was like, okay, just play in the middle of the board so I know it's there. But yeah, double cross, being able to take like a Fenrir or something, people had to read this card all day too. It's it's really funny. Um, so yeah, that's the main deck. On to the extra. So I'm on, still, two copies of Plum. People are on two copies of Happiness. To me, this card is more broken. You know, being able to go like Plump, attach the Delicious, and then being able to attach like either one pretty or multiple pretties guarantees you a five mat or more noir. Um, or like you just swing with it and then go down or go Zeus and you just have a multi nuke Zeus. Um, so I really like being able to have two materials for this, whether it's attaching pretty memories, sending cards and attaching cards to like make a big noir, make a Zeus. I feel that two, at least for my play style, is better than two happiness. Like if I'm making the happiness, I'm killing you. So I shouldn't need two. That's, that's my thinking on it. Um, and then we're on two copies of Beauty because it's good. Uh, the one copy of Happiness, one copy of Noir. 
Um, card's good. It's better in the pure version. Um, if you're doing the purely combo line to go for leap, like you can usually end on sprite stuff too. It just sort of depends on how your hand opens up. Uh, and then we have two copies of the Fat Ass Noir. It's good. One copy of Gigantic because we like playing sprite cards. One to Gym Buster because it's good. This amazing card, Kiki Nagashi Fuko. So against Chimera Labyrinth, game one. Um, I go summon out of level one. I go summon Lily Effect. He imperms. And then he used some other kind of face down. I summon out uh, purely. And then I make Kiki Nagashi. He, of course, he has to read it. I go battle face swing for no damage. He reads again. He's like, um, yeah, that's fine. I go main face two. Make a Zeus. He has no response. And I'm thinking, okay, do I nuke here or do I wait for him to do something? I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Detach to nuke. He goes under root. And he just grabs the purely out of my grave. I guess he was like pissed off or something. Grabs the purely. Sets it off the underroot, sends my Zeus, everything nukes, and I set the leap and the double cross, and he's just drawing and setting cards because he keeps bricking, and I'm like, this is great. So, yeah, I love Kiki Nagashi in this deck. Next up, we're also playing one copy of Downward, two Zeus, and then the one Sprint. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's standard. And because I'm not like Pac, I'm actually going to show my side. I'm just kidding. I'm just busting Pac's balls. He did a deck profile on Team Samurai's channel and didn't even show his fucking side. I'm like, don't even show the profile, but... What can you do? Uh, so we're on three copies of Kurakara. So I really like this card over things like Dark Ruler and Super Poly because I like the hardest matchup for this deck if you don't open Droll is going to be the Synchron matchup. I haven't seen the deck popping up as much because I feel like outside of like Triff Gaming and maybe like a couple other people, a lot of people feel like that the Synchron deck is just really inconsistent. Like it can make great boards. But the issue is, is that if you brick, you just lose. Or if you get drolled and you don't have the optimal hand to play through it, you lose. So being able to go Kurakara, if they do King Calamity you, then at least you can go, okay, tribute the King Calamity, make a 3,000 Kurakara, and like kind of hope that that's enough. Probably not, but it at least can maybe get you the ball game back to your turn because in theory, you can go tribute the King Calamity, summon uh, Kurakara, use 3,000 to hopefully swing over like I don't know, some sort of negate that's under 3k. Main phase two, you summon a level one, make Kiki Nagashi defensive pass turn, and hope that like that's enough to kind of get the ball game back to your turn to where you can win. Um, even against like Infernoble, I realize that if you open this, then even though Dark Ruler does kill Infernoble with like their four equips in the back row, plus he had a fucking imperm. Um, but then they have like their two Charlemains or whatever, and then the Phoenix Gear Freed. If I would have opened up Kurakara, if he would have just used up his negates, I could have just been like, okay, cool, Kurakara, your whole board attack. So I really like this card uh, against Infernoble. Even though I didn't open it, I could see from his M board that this card's disgusting against Infernoble. Um, then we're playing two copies of Bell. Again, I still respect Branded, and I hate Labyrinth with a passion. Eradicator needs to be banned. That deck needs to die in a hole. Uh, this card is very, very good. Um, I would argue it's better than Droll. Uh, the, any tier player that wants to play, you can Ghost Bell them. I'll typically side out an Ash and a Droll uh, to bring in these two, and I'll kind of do an OCG line of thinking where you still play six hand traps, uh, depending on anything else I side. Because sometimes I side out more hand traps and non-engine um, to bring in other stuff. Like I said, I'll take out a blue and like a foolish and call by and stuff if I'm going second or whatever. And then the one resonator, I still feel like I go to time a lot, just not because like I slow play or my opponent slow play me. It's just, I always want to have something for time because even though games two and three might be blowouts, if anyone's going to go to time and have terrible luck, it's going to be me. Like that's uh, call it paranoia. I have the worst luck in this game. Uh, one feather duster. I actually never drew this. Uh, the two cosmic came up once against labyrinth. It was really funny. Uh, three of the most broken card in the game. Three evenly matched. This card still needs to go to one. And then three copies of D Barrier. We use this game two against Tier. He drew for turn. I went in your draw phase, activate D Barrier, call fusion. And then we went to the next game. It was great. Um, overall, I'm really happy with this deck. Um, that was a terrible hand riff. Um, overall, I'm happy with the side. I'm happy with the main. Happy with the extra. Uh, if there was anything I would want to change going into this regional, I would love to have some sort of eradicator package, but. There's just not enough room in the deck, and you can't get to it consistently enough. Because at that point, you basically have to commit to playing things like Gamma Burst in the main deck and hope that it works out for you. And as broken as Eradicator is, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you know, if the opponent has it, they have it. If you don't hit it, then it's like you're wasting resources trying to hit it. And you also have to be kind of careful too, which is why I was thinking about swapping like to Retaliating Seas or something. Because I don't want to draw six cards off my Sleepies and hit shit like D-Barrier that I can't use. Um, so 
I don't know. Maybe I'll mess around with it a little bit more before the regional. Um, drawing into hand traps is obviously way better. At the same time, if the opponent can't kill you with all the negates that you have up on the board, especially since on average you can end on five or six interruptions, best case scenario you're ending on like eight interruptions, um, then like even if you're not drawing hand traps, you're going to have resources to play on the next turn because the opponent just couldn't kill you and you just OTK them. Uh, especially too if like you open up a sleepy memory then you just set it and then in draw phase activate it attach it to you know one of your purelys you still get the draw on the standby and then you're insulated from the first set of damage that you take so guys let me know what you think down in the comments below like i said i'm gonna be playing this uh at the hollywood florida regional hopefully not everybody starts preparing for this it's been kind of under the radar but we'll see what happens maybe i just wait to post this until closer to the regional thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next video